Well, it's called news from the automation department. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Oniv and Oniv and Lee Kicks and um, Shadow Server and all the guys that are here or not here that share information with us so that we can actually use it for something good. Uh, yeah, I heard someone wanted to applaud. That is great. That now exactly the point in time. Um, so uh, there is an example that how we use it at Circle. Um, in this case, the leak leakx data um, for something recent like Exchange Server vulnerabilities that we are informed about through leakx. Um, and there we have the problem. We have uh, we get IP addresses, and we want to inform the responsible people, and that's not always so easy, especially if you want to try to automate it, because with an IP address you can do DNS uh, who is lookups, and you can get perhaps a bit of information, but um, there is, is more to, to gather uh, to reach the responsible people um, as quickly as possible. So. Um, we collected a few uh, things and glued it together, like the Leakix API um, usage through the Go client. Then um, we get a list of IP addresses. From there, we use OpenSSL to get the uh, associated uh, DNS names or alternate domain names. Um, then we do a um, an Nmap script because usually we do not uh, blindly take data from from anyone, but we tr uh, validate the information that we get so that we know what we are doing. Um, thanks to Luciano, also from the team who um, did a very nice Nmap scanner, especially for exchange vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, from there we do who is lookups on DNS, on um, on the do uh, domain name system, and so on and so on. Um, then we get a list of uh, email addresses that we can manually correct if necessary or um, augment when we see that it's quite short. Uh, then a uh, notification template is associated and emails are sent through the ticket system to uh, the hopefully responsible people. So the result of that looks like um, one of our standard emails with condensed information, what it is about and what they should do. Uh, it's too much to read it now uh, uh, aloud. <laughs> um, danger zone, live demo. So in the background, it's, you can imagine that it's uh, getting the information from LeakX. Oh, <laughs> danger zone. We try again. And that's actually not our issue, TCP IO timeout. So here we see some random company with an, um, um, an exchange server that is quite, uh, has been quite recently patched, but is, uh, probably, and uh, according to the script of uh, Luciano, is still um, not um, uh, mitigating the latest attacks that are referenced in the CV. Um, we collected two email addresses. Now we could go to the website and see if we find more uh, email addresses, but we will um, accept it for the moment. So I press yes, and the ticket is created, and uh, oh, um, we, <laughs> we keep that for later, the next one. So, and then, and, and then um, email is already sent to the uh, um, administrators or whatever. So that was part one. There's a still a part two. Um, for those people who run larger communities of MISP like we do, we have around, I think, 3,000 users, um, 1,500 organizations. Um, it's quite natural that with such an amount of users, external users that you do not control, um, users are no longer in their companies. They have other issues like the mailboxes are full or whatever, and you receive bounces from them. And we try to have a certain hygiene in our system, um, and that's why we came up with the idea to create a small um, bounce handling script, um, which is based on, well, again, glue and uh, scripts. Um, for instance, postfix headers. Ah, oh, that's very interesting. You see postfix headers uh, that uh, collect bounces that are somehow um, associated with our, with some of our uh, misp instances. And 
exchange servers are really cool because they create ex um, bounce messages in their local uh, language. It, it's, it's, it's really fun to keep track of that. Um, yeah, then um, the idea is the bounce messages are collected into a mail deer, and from there a script um, checks them, uh, extracts the email addresses, um, does some sanity checks, and then you can either disable I mean, it's automatic, you configure that. You can either disable email notification or disable the user completely. And uh, yeah, that's not much glue and not much stuff. You get a notification uh, that uh, certain email addresses have then been disabled. And I think that's it already. Stuff is available if you want it, if you need it. <laughs> yeah, thanks.